Among his flurry of Labor Day afternoon tweets, and it was a flurry, President Trump attacked the New York Times over an article that revealed U.S. attempts to flip a billionaire Russian oligarch, hoping to obtain information about organized crime and later possible Russian aid to Trump's presidential campaign. We're joined now by Matt Rosenberg. He's a co-author of the Times article. Matt, great story. Th thanks for coming on. Uh, what's interesting about this is that it gets at the background of Bruce Orr, who's become this sort of bete noir of Trump and many on the right for being a kind of secret uh, player in a, in a democratic plot to bring down this president, et cetera. But, but what your story seems to get at here is that Orr was, was working hard to get in the depths of Russian organized crime. Is that right? But also its attempts to, to find allies in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, this was a, an effort that predated Trump's candidacy. This began in 2014. Um, in which the FBI and Department of Justice sought a number of Russian oligarchs, we think about a half dozen, to see if they were willing to kind of become informants in exchange for, you know, being allowed to travel to the U.S. where the oligarch in question, the one we named Oleg Deripaska, has business interests. The other person involved in this was Christopher Steele, the author of the dossier, the former, the former British spy. He had known or since 2007, when he was still a British spy they had met. They both had a long professional interest in Russia and Russian organized crime. And when the FBI and Department of Justice began this initiative in 2014, they used Steele as an intermediary. And so rather than being paint, rather than Steele and Orr somehow plotting to get the dossier to the FBI, what we found is that, you know, fast forward now to the summer of 2016, in July, Steele's pass passing through DC. He has breakfast with Orr. Over breakfast, or who's an old friend, says, what are you working on? He tells him about the dossier. But Steele was, you know, the dossier got to the FBI through other means. Steele had gone to a different FBI agent about it. There was no great plot here, we found. What there was was a sanctioned U.S. government effort to go and try new sources of information yeah. about Russian organized crime and Russian, and Russian intelligence. Now, now, to be clear, did that invest, as they're looking into Russian organized crime, yeah. uh, trying to make them allies, in effect, or informants, rather, did they then stumble on a relationship with Trump world? Is that the connection or was it just coincidental that it was at the same time uh, that, that the counterintelligence investigation started? They didn't. You know, as far as we know, they had no success in this effort. Okay. That, you know, this starts in 2014. We know in the summer of 2016, separately, FBI counterintelligence began investigating possible links between Russia and the Trump campaign. And then in the fall of 2016, FBI agents went to one of the oligarchs, Oleg Deripaska, he was in New York at the time, and said to him, asked him about whether his former business partner, who was Paul Manafort, served as a link between the Kremlin and the Trump campaign. But it didn't start out as a kind of attempt to find dirt on Trump. It, it later kind of grew out of an FBI investigation that was starting separately. Uh, understood, understood. And, and is it atypical for a U.S. law enforcement agent here, in this case, Bruce Orr from the Justice Department, to call on contacts with, with a former agent from British intelligence, of course, an allied intelligence service. Is that an unusual issue? I know, I know, for instance, that the FBI had used Christopher Steele in the past in, in its investigation of FIFA, so they mm -hmm. had a relationship there. But is this kind of relationship that you're describing here out of bounds? Is it, is it unusual? Um, we've had no indication it is. You know, they weren't asking Steele to do anything legal or anything that the U.S. somehow couldn't do. They were simply trying to find people they knew they could rely on who had contacts to some of these men they were trying to cultivate and to serve as a bridge. Um, that's not unusual in the intelligence world, you know. All kinds of intermediaries are used. Well, it seems that President Trump might have been watching you on CNN earlier today, imagine that. Uh, he responded to your reporting by tweeting the following, uh, we're quoting here, according to the failing New York Times, the FBI started a major effort to flip Putin loyalists in 2014 to 2016. Quoting here, it wasn't about Trump, he wasn't even close to a candidate yet, rigged witch, witch hunt. Is he misreading the thrust of your reporting? Yeah, um, I mean, he's sort of missing the larger point here is that, you know, it, it, there, what we found is there, this was not part of any witch hunt. This was part of a legitimate effort to kind of cultivate a new source or new mm -hmm. source of information. And he kind of left out the second part of what I said, which is that it did eventually turn to Trump after an entirely separate FBI investigation had begun. Mm -hmm. Understood. All right, uh, Matt Rosenberg, thanks very much for helping us understand. Thank you.